In the gathering dark, the shadow fold is a swath of near impenetrable darkness that has cut this country in two. They've been cut off from their harbors and ports, they're landlocked, they're surrounded by enemies, and they're barely hanging on. They're basically slowly being choked to death. In the scene I'm going to read you, Alina Starkov's regiment has been attacked on the Shadowfold by a flock of Volkra, and nobody is quite sure how they survived, but everybody seems to think that Alina had something to do with it. Alina is our heroine, and she's a little bit of a mess. She's... Uh, pale and scrawny and uh, sickly and she's not particularly good at anything. She's a cartographer in the king's army but she's not a very good cartographer and right now she's completely confused and terrified. She's been hauled in front of the leader of the kingdom's magical elite. She doesn't know what's going to happen to her. Uh, She's wounded. She's just seen her best friend nearly killed and that's where our story picks up. Hold out your arm, said the Darkling. What? We've wasted enough time. Hold out your arm. A cold spike of fear went through me. I looked around in panic, but there was no help to be had. Shaking, I held out my left arm. Push up your sleeve. I didn't do anything. I'd meant to say it loudly, to proclaim it, but my voice sounded frightened and small. The Darkling looked at me, waiting. I pushed up my sleeve. He spread his arms and terror washed through me as I saw his palms filling with something black that pooled and curled through the air like ink in water. Now, he said in that same soft conversational voice, as if we were sitting together drinking tea, as if I did not stand before him shaking. Let's see what you can do. He brought his hands together and there was a sound like a thunderclap. I gasped as undulating darkness spread from his clasped hands, spilling in a black wave over me and the crowd. I was blind. The room was gone. Everything was gone. I cried out in terror as I felt the Darkling's fingers close around my bare wrist. Suddenly, my fear receded. It was still there, cringing like an animal inside me, but it had been pushed aside by something calm and sure and powerful, something vaguely familiar. I felt a call ring through me, and to my surprise, I felt something in me rise up to answer. I pushed it away, pushed it down. Somehow I knew that if that thing got free, it would destroy me. Nothing there, the Darkling murmured. I realized how very close he was to me in the dark. My panicked mind seized on his words. Nothing there. That's right. Nothing. Nothing at all. Now leave me be. And to my relief, that struggling thing inside me seemed to lie back down, leaving the darkling's call unanswered. Not so fast, he whispered. I felt something cold press against the inside of my forearm. In the same moment that I realized it was a knife, the blade cut into my skin. Pain and fear rushed through me. I cried out. The thing inside me roared to the surface, speeding toward the Darkling's call. I couldn't stop myself. I answered. The world exploded into blazing white light. The darkness shattered around us like glass. For a moment, I saw the faces of the crowd, their mouths wide with shock as the tent filled with shining sunlight, the air shimmering with heat. Then the Darkling released his grip, and with his touch went that peculiar sense of certainty that had possessed me. The radiant light disappeared, leaving ordinary candlelight in its place but I could still feel the warm and inexplicable glow of sunshine on my skin. My legs gave way and the Darkling caught me up against his body with one surprisingly strong arm. I guess you only look like a mouse, he whispered in my ear, and then beckoned to one of his personal guard. Take her, he said, handing me over to the Oprichnik, who reached out his arm to support me. I felt myself flush at the indignity of being handed over like a sack of potatoes, but I was too shaky and confused to protest. Blood was running down my arm from the cut the Darkling had given me. Ivan! shouted the Darkling. A tall heart render rushed from the dais to the Darkling's side. Get her to my coach. I want her surrounded by an armed guard at all times. Take her to the little palace and stop for nothing. Ivan nodded. Wait, I protested, but the Darkling was already turning away. I grabbed hold of his arm, ignoring the gasp that went up from the Grisha onlookers. There's been some kind of mistake. I don't... I'm not... My voice trailed off as the Darkling turned slowly to me, his eye, slate eyes drifting to where my hand gripped his sleeve. I let go, but I wasn't giving up that easily. I'm not what you think I am, I whispered desperately. The Darkling stepped closer to me and said, his voice so low that only I could hear, I doubt you have any idea what you are.